there are some things in life where if you need them, you're just going to have to buy them. Like things like, say, a plug socket or a light switch. You're like, they're a few pound. I'm never going to be able to make it in my shed. So it's just something, if you need it, you buy it. But I think with our gilding sort of toolkit, that's a little bit different. I think we probably just buy it because we think that's the only thing that's going to do the job. When in reality, they're pretty basic tools. And I think a lot of them we could make ourselves. So obviously, in this day and age, things are getting more and more expensive. And, you know, I'm looking at ways to sort of cut costs on a craft that is very, very expensive to do. So in this video, what I'm going to be doing is looking at making the Gilders toolkit out of some real basic materials and try and keep the costs as low as possible. But before I crack on with that, if you're a fan of reverse glass, sign painting, gold leaf, digital processes and much more, then you're in the right place because that's all this channel's about. And I'll try to release a video every couple of weeks. Also, if you'd like to support the channel, there's a link to my Patreon in the description where you can now sign up for a seven day free trial. See if it's your cup of tea and you'll get your money's worth out of it. There's also a link to buy me a coffee if you ever fancy buying me a drink. There's the Facebook group where I think 1,300 strong now, all amazing artists helping each other out, all sort of varying skill levels. Really good place to go if this is something you're into. And what else is there? Ah, my Etsy shop where I'm selling some designs. And last but not least, my merch store where you can dress like me if you wanted to. Um, anyway, that out of the way, let's crack on with it. All right. Okay, so let's start with the Gilders tip. So this is something that you use to sort of pick up gold leaf and then apply it to the glass. Got a couple of options here. I'm not going to be trying to remake this. Uh, that's because this is squirrel hair or something like that. And to make that on a budget, I'd have to kill a squirrel and I'm, I'm not up for that. So I'm going to be remaking something. Well, not even remaking this because, you know, I think this is quite basic, but I'm going to be going with something that doesn't require squirrel hair. So looking at this one, this is the thorn tip. And... We get these, it's about 30 quid, and I'm not knocking this product, this is brilliant. I use it all the time, it's such a good tool, but it is just a cardboard box with some mesh stuck around it. And, you know, I think that's a pretty cheap thing to make, and I'm not going to remake this because I sort of, you know, I think you could figure out how to make it from looking at it. But the principle of it is you've got something that's soft, that isn't going to damage the gold leaf, something that you can apply your petroleum jelly to, and something that's sort of taut enough to pick up the leaf. But I'm going to be going down a different route. So what I did, I went to my local fabric store and bought this, which is a sort of microfiber, synth not synthetic, but sort of a faux suede. I suppose that is synthetic, but basically it's not real suede. It's not like animal skin or something like that. But it's nice and thick, really, really soft. It was... I think about seven pound or eight pound for a meter, and you can buy it in half meters at the shop I go to. So it's four quid for, hang on, that much, which I mean, it's half a meter in this way, but in this direction, it's probably about a meter and a half. So I've got plenty of it. So I'm going to jump out into the shed. Uh, to make this, I'm going to be using power tools, but you don't need to. You know, just things like a saw and a sander, but I mean, you can use a hand saw and a bit of sandpaper. So, but anyway, I'll just go out there now and show you what I mean. Right, so the main thing I'm going to be using for this is wood. And I've got myself just a sort of off cut of oak, but you don't have to use oak. You know, any wood will do, um, especially, you know, you can get pallet wood for free a lot of the time. Um, and that's absolutely fine. Um, I've drawn out an eight centimetre mark on here because that's the size of a uh, sort of whole gold leaf. I'm going to do different sizes because the one place where that thorn tip falls short is if you chop up a leaf and wanted to apply your own individual little bits, you're not going to be able to do that with the thorn tip. It's just a big thing for picking up a whole leaf. So I'm going to do one bit for picking up a whole leaf and then a few different variations. So I've got these this sort of nice set of tips. So just bring this over here. Like I said before, I'm going to be using power tools, but you don't have to, you know, you could you could cut this with a hand saw and that would be absolutely fine.
So there, perfect little starting point. I'm just going to go ahead and cut the rest of these and then we'll move on to the next stage. Right, so I've cut myself three bits. Full leaf, half leaf, quarter leaf. And now what I'm going to do is just find the centre of these and mark an X so that I can drill a little hole so I can attach a handle. Um, you don't have to do this either, you know, if you've got some like old drawer handles you can just glue one on or something like that. Uh, but I'm just going to use um, just a bolt, just a standard bolt, just so that I can sort of take it off and on and off if you wanted to kind of store them in, in something small. But yeah, this is um, just sort of a way I think might look quite nice and, and it might be things that you might have in the shed, you know, rather than if, if you were thinking of buying handles or anything like that. So as well, what I was going to do was, um, you know, laser a design on these, but, you know, I might do that at some point. But, you know, for the purposes of this video, I think let's just go quite no frills, keep it as, as basic as possible without adding a load of sort of flamboyant stuff to it. And what I've also got is... Just some sandpaper and i've got 180 grit because the wood's quite smooth you know if you get rough wood like a sort of pallet wood you're probably going to have to go through grades of sandpaper you know maybe sort of 40 to 80 to 120 and then 120 is probably enough i just you know 180 just for that extra bit of smoothness but yeah I'm just going to put not all the way through though I'm just going to drill in a little bit so that i can thread my bolt into there Right, so I've sanded all those and I've just sort of, you know, you might have seen, I just did the edges so that they're, so there's nothing sharp, you know, so just nice to handle, really nice and smooth. Last thing I'm going to do, um, I've just found these bolts, you know, they don't even match. So like I say, I'm going a bit no frills with this. Um, and I'm just going to use um, a hand tap so that I can put these in like nice and easily. Again, you know, I, don't, uh, I know I said it before, but... You don't need all these tools, you don't need to use bolts, you could use just stick on anything, you know, but I'm just going to use what I've got in the shed. And the hand tap just um, means you can, oop, means you can make a nice sort of thread line for your bolt to go in, just makes it a little bit tidier. So. A screw in there and then I can tighten that at the bottom with this bolt so nice and quick nice and simple to do there you go pretty nice tidy easy and you know these will always come off so I think you know when I do find myself a matching set of bolts, I probably will sort of laser engrave these so just so that they're sort of a nice branded set of my own. But anyway, let's take this back indoors. Right, so the last bit, and it's pretty much as basic as everything we've done so far. So I'm just gonna cut myself three squares or sort of three shapes that just slightly overlap the tips that I've made. So, how big have we got? That's plenty. Right, I'm just going to bring the camera down here, make it a bit easier to see. And this stuff. I mean, both sides are soft, but I mean, if, if you, the material you get, if you think one side's softer than the other, that's the side that we want to touch the gold leaf. And then all I'm using is, this says it's wood glue, but it's just PVA glue, you know, the sort of stuff that, well, 
I certainly used to use at school. So, yeah, it's, this isn't anything special at all. Nice and even, but not too thick. Because although this this it's not waterproof, but you know a little bit of PVA glue is not going to seep to it. But you certainly hundred percent you want to go right to the edges. Oh, so pop that down. Pop that on there, then pop that on there. There you go, I'm just going to leave that to dry for an hour and then we'll come back and give them a trim. Right, so I've left those for a few hours. Now all I'm going to do is just trim nice and close to the edge with just a pair of sharp scissors. You can do this with a knife as well. So it's just so that there's no nothing to sort of hang off the edge that might get caught. But this glue, PVA glue, is pretty much what, what they use to glue wood in a lot of places. I've always used it to glue wood. and. When you leave it overnight that will bond as strong as the wood itself so you know it's uh yeah quite underrated i always thought it was just the sort of crap cheap glue that you used at sort of school but evidently not so yeah i'm just going to trim these down and then we'll move on to the next bit Right, so that's the gilder's tips. A few bits of scrap wood, a few spare bolts, and just a fraction of this material, which was four pounds. So that's a huge cost saving, considering the thorn tip is around about 30 pound. So anyway, moving on to the gilder's cushion. This is mine. It's a bit of wood, which does look like oak, I think. A um, bit of new buck or brushed leather, and then just a sort of something that's holding it on, which in this case is staples. Um, it doesn't need to be brushed leather. You know, this material is thick, it's hardy. I've tested it in, with my Gilder's knife and bear in mind, Gilder's knives aren't very sharp. You know, I think if you were going to be using something that's a razor sharp knife, neither of these are going to stand up to it, you know, but this is thick. It's really soft. It's not going to damage the gold leaf. So this is a perfect material to use. So just going to jump back out in the shed and then we'll make the Gilder's cushion. Okay, so I haven't come back out in the shed just to show you how to cut another bit of wood. It's really just to make a decision on what wood I want to use for the base of my cushion. Um, and what I'm going to make that decision on is how easy it is to pin the fabric to. So I've got these off cuts from um, when I'd made the Gilders tips. So I bought them out, just got a standard staple gun. Now I'm going with a bit of pine, and I mean, this does need tidying up, it's a proper knackered bit of pine, but I think, you know, the whole point of this is to show that, you know, we don't need to go out buying really fancy bits of wood. This was off the, an old drawer that I've had sat in the shed for ages. And really, I just want to make sure that my staple gun will go through this and the pine, and if it does, then, then that'll be fine. Um, right, so... Yeah, that's good enough for me. Now, it doesn't matter that that bit's stuck out there because I can always just bang that down with the hammer. But that is firm on there. So what I'm going to do, Gilder's cushion I'm making measures something like 22 centimetres by 15 and a half centimetres. So I'm just going to cut that and then sort of chisel these bits off here, sand this bit of wood down. But, but once I've done that, I'll just start the video again and then we can apply the sort of cushioned section and then wrap the material around it. Okay.
Right, so there we are. That bit of pine has come up lovely. And again, just sort of sanded the corners and edges so that it's nicer to handle. Um, this is just a bit of an old yoga mat. I understand not everyone's going to have an old yoga mat lying around, but it's just sort of quite, you know, like a foam or something like that. But a bit of rubber would be fine as well. It's really just so that you've got something that you're not just going against solid wood with this material. This one here, you know, it's a bit cushiony, but what's under there is pretty hard, you know. So this is going to be fine. Bit of yoga mat and then cut the material much bigger than we need it, just so it gives a bit to play with. So now I'm just going to try my best to attach this while recording. I think this is probably going to be a bit of a mission, but here we go. This isn't my forte, this sort of thing. So I think once it's on, I might just do a snip in a corner or something like that. Actually, let's try that upright. That's probably going to be easier, isn't it? Just going to get a couple in, and then um, and this is probably going to be the easiest bit. Let me get in the last bit really taut. That's all good. Right, and that's the cushion. So all I've done since the last video is just trimmed the little bits where it was glued. So I put the PVA glue on it, put just a couple of bits of wood butted up against it, left it for an hour, and that's dry, and then just used my scissors and trimmed it off like that. And that is perfect, just about the right sort of density with that yoga mat. And, you know, don't want to big myself up, but it's looking like quite a tidy little kit, I reckon. Let's just have a look over here. You know, it's pretty snazzy, but what I'm going to do, because annoyingly I'm still waiting for something to be posted for me to finish, so I'm going to take these out and just laser engrave my sort of design onto them, just to kill some time, all right? Right, so now we've got a Gilders cushion and a set of Gilders tips. And the last thing I'm gonna make for this kit is a burnishing pad. So the one I use is this, it's from the Goldfather in Chicago, and it is amazing. You know, it's so well made, it's beautiful. It, it's something I'm gonna to continue to use, but you know, I'm gonna see if we can make one on a budget. So what comes in the box is a kind of description of what this is, and it says it's micro velvet. So I've looked online and found out the sort of best quality micro velvet that you can get. And I bought myself some. Um, I paid a premium for this because I ended up buying it off Amazon just because I wanted to get it delivered today. And it was about eight pound for a meter. So you get loads of it, feels exactly the same, but if, you, if time is not an issue, 
then you'll be able to get this at around about half the price. So I've just cut myself a sort of section, so should we call it? And then I've got a bit of sponge. So I just cut this off a bit of spare sponge I had lying around, but you could use one of the kind of sponges that you use to do the washing up or something like that, like a scouring pad, just cut the rough bit off it. So let me just bring my camera down here and then we'll get started on this. And with this, I think I know I've sort of made an effort on the finish of the other things, but in this case, I'm not going to. This is going to be really, really basic. So all I'm going to do is kind of fold this up around it like that. You could, if you wanted to, um, you know, get a bit of wood and almost sort of staple it to it like I had with the Gilders cushion. But in this case, you know, I'm, I'm just going to go with, with what I've got, which is the sponge, the um, really nice micro velvet and the cable tie. So I'm then just going to wrap this around here. Right, don't need this bit anymore. And that is a burnishing pad. And that'll work perfectly. So I think I might just trim a little bit of the excess off. As well, these scissors, I think these were like about a fiver, they're brilliant. They were on Amazon as well, and they're proper fabric scissors, really, really sharp. But there you go. That is our burnishing pad. So now I'm going to move on to testing the stuff to show you that it all actually works. Right, so here's all of our kit. And I'm going to start by just laying a whole gold leaf and showing you how to you know, load the leaf with the, um, or charge, sorry, charge the tip with the petroleum jelly. So let's just get a leaf out there. I need to remove it from the book if you're using a whole leaf. So what I do is just wipe my finger in here. I'm not scooping a lot out. So if you look on my finger there, that's how much I've got. Then I'm going to proper rub that in, into my hand. You know, I don't want lumps and clumps of it anywhere. I want to make sure I can feel that it's moist on there, but, you know, not sort of globules of it. So that feels fine, just so there's a sort of sheen to your skin. And then using this tip, I'm just going to swipe that across the back of my hand, like that. And that should do it. So let's just pop this on here. And there's our whole leaf. Picked up nice and easy. So that's the first part. Now let's just make sure the second part works. So I'm just going to move the camera over. There we go. Oh. I left a bit on there, but I tend to do that a lot of the time when I um, lay my first leaf, no matter what tip I use. So let's have a look at that. That's gone on all right. Let's just do another one because I want to, I want to kind of show that that does go on ever so nicely. So let's just get another leaf. I'm not recharging it. You'll know when you need to recharge it because a bit of the leaf will appear loose. Again, that's gone on there really nicely. There we go, that's gone on perfect. Right, so that was a whole leaf. Let's go for a half leaf and test out this new cushion. Mm 
Okay, for this, I'm just going to use my gilder's knife. Again, these aren't very sharp, so you don't need to worry about cutting through the fabric, but like I said before, it's really hardy, so it's going to load this one as well. There we go, got a half leaf on there. Bring this over. There we go, lovely. Got on really nice without any rips. I mean, you shouldn't worry if there are rips. You know, this is one of those things that it happens. No matter how many times you've done it, no matter how experienced you are, you are going to have times where you lay a leaf and then you end up with a patch, just like that. And don't be disheartened, it just happens and then the next leaf will probably be fine. So let's give it a little bit higher. Right, so the pad works, the tips work. Now I just want to show you a sort of substitute for the knife. So I'm just going to lay a leaf on here. And I've said before, this doesn't need to be sharp at all. In fact, it's better if it isn't. And what I'm using as a substitute is just the back of a standard kitchen knife or sort of butter knife or something. If you're going to do this, you've got to know two things. Firstly, that there's no sort of nicks and stuff like that in this side because that will rip the leaf. Mainly that you don't touch it. So if it's a knife that you've used and you think it's smooth enough, you need to clean it properly because any oils from your skin will just stick to the gold. But this has been cleaned, this works fine. So. Let's just pop that on there. See, that goes through it nicely. I can then use my half leaf tip. Let's pick this up. You can see there, that's when you can tell that you're going to need to reload a tip when you get a sort of little bit of loose leaf. Let's bring this over here again. Right, on to the last thing, which is the burnishing. Obviously, that's not going to finish this piece because I've only done the first layer of gold and there's all little holes in it and stuff. But after each layer of gold, you'll always burnish it to make sure you get rid of any of these like creases and stuff like that. So I've also been asked before, you know, how long to leave in between burnishing. And it completely depends. You know, it's really, you know when the gold's dry because it goes like this mirrorish finish. You know, so just put it near a radiator, probably take about 15, 20 minutes. So, you know, but if you just sort of do a little test on one area, if it wipes the gold off, that's no good. If it sort of, you know, just takes the little flaky areas off, then, you know, that's ready to go. And that's all I'm doing. So this is spongy, really, really soft and smooth. And what I want to be doing is sort of pressing like, you know, about that much. You know, I don't know how well that comes across, but you're not digging into it. You know, what I mean? you're not trying to rub the gold off. It's so delicate. You just want to kind of, you know, buffer the areas where there are creases. And you're not going to get all the creases out, but remember, they're not going to show on the other side. So let's just see if I can show you how this is doing down here. Oops. Right. So there's loads of little minute creases in this. Hopefully you can see... As I do this, that buffers a load of them out. You're always going to have some, but again, like I say, you're not going to see all these from the other side, but you want to be doing it a decent amount, you know, all of, until you're sort of, you know, happy that the sort of majority of them have gone. Ooh. And that 
what you want to do as well is check when you've got the sort of residue on here, or not residue, but little bits of gold, you know, sort of just bang it on a table. That's not worth doing at the moment, but you can end up with a lot of flakes of gold on here and that will just scratch sort of the gold that's on there. So it's just keep an eye on it. You know, give this a really nice sort of buffer around everywhere. And I think that looks pretty good. So what I'll do now is go into time lapse to just do the other layers of gold. And yeah, and then we'll see what it looks like at the end. And that's my DIY gilding kit. And despite the fact that it's made largely of stuff that I had lying around, it still works as well as anything that I've ever paid money for. And that's kind of what I'm trying to say here is, you know, there are a lot of things we buy and do we necessarily need to? You know, some of them are very basic and you can make them yourself. And, you know, nowadays things are expensive. And I don't just mean our gilding stuff, I just mean everything. So where we can find these nice sort of bonuses, it's worth taking them. I think all in all, I've got a gilder's cushion, three gilder's tips, and a burnishing pad. And I'd hazard a guess and say this cost me less than £10 to make these. But when I bought those three things uh, online, the actual products themselves, that cost me about £90. So that's a massive saving, you know, and it's nice to have things you made yourself as well, you know, especially if you can put your own stamp on them. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you found it useful. If you did, please subscribe to the channel and click the little thumbs up icon and please share it with anyone else who you think might enjoy it. So, till next time, cheers.